Hello again. Today we're going to have a look at habitation inspections. What it is, what it's worth, what it checks. A lot of people say, why do I need one? I, could, I know what works because I use it on a regular basis. But most people don't have access to the test equipment that we use on a habitation inspection to make sure that things are functioning safely and properly. Let's have a look at what's involved. Right, so the first thing we need to look at is the general condition of the bodywork. So we're going to do a visual inspection, just make sure there's no cracks in the bodywork, the joints are all good and clean and tight, windows are secure and not damaged, things like awnings are secure, not hanging off, doors, door hinges, door handles, locks, all that kind of thing. I've just spotted one on this van, the gas locker door here, the top hinge isn't fitted properly. That means the gap here will let water in, in rain. So we need to put that one right straight away. So this is a simple one to fix. First of all, we need to open the locker. On these locker doors, the hinge pins are removable. It's a simple plastic hinge pin. And we can see there that the hinge pin isn't in the hinge on the door itself. So the first thing we do is pull the hinge down, the hinge pin down, you might even need to Give it a gentle tap, and there we go. And then we can line that back up, push the hinge pin back up, and now this door will close and seal properly. So we continue in the visual inspection, checking locker doors, check all of those hinges are correct, seals are all in good condition, door shuts and locks and latches nicely. And again, visual inspection on the seals and body joints, and there's no damage visible. Windows are all good and intact. And we'll continue around onto this side, checking again, locker doors and hinges, general condition of bodywork, joints, seals, windows, and the fridge vents. Now, you won't always have these. If you've got a compressor fridge, there won't be any vents. But if it's a three-way fridge, you'll have fridge vents. So this is where we do the fridge service. Now, not every workshop includes a fridge service as part of the habitation inspection. They ought to, but some don't. So it's worth checking when you book your habitation inspection whether they do a service on the fridge or not. The fridge service basically consists of cleaning and checking the burner and the flue. On this one, it's just about accessible. Sadly, not all motorhome makers put the fridge vent in a position where we can get up the burner in situ. And up here behind the top vent, we have the flue outlet. That needs to be removed so that we can clean the flue, make sure it's not sutted up. It's also worth having a quick visual inspection to make sure that this compartment is sealed from the interior. We don't want flue gases getting inside where they could do us harm. So let's go inside and have a look now. Moving into the inside, first of all, we'll check all the windows, make sure they're open and close and latch properly and there's no damage around the frames. Same with roof lights, check the blinds, all nice and free, checking all the lights are working. We've got the hookup connected so we'll plug in a simple socket tester and that will check earth, live and neutral are all the correct way around and we've got a good earth, that's what all the green lights are showing so that's all good. So we can put that one away. We've got a 12 volt socket tester here. We've got a 12 volt socket in the back of the van. I'll go and test that now. This is a little device I made up because I like to check them. Because it's an LED, it will tell me if the polarity is the right way around, also if we've got power at the socket. So we just plug it in to a 12 volt socket and the light lights up. That's all good. So that's all the 12 volts, all good. Now we'll check the damp. This little device is a moisture meter. This tells us if there's any water ingress into the vehicle. Very important to check for, because water ingress spells disaster. This is a very good reason for having a habitation inspection on a regular basis. Annually is typical. The most common places for water to get in are around windows, roof lights, doors, anywhere where the bodywork has been punctured to put in a doorway, or where the roof and wall meets. They're typical places. So we check everywhere, absolutely everywhere, inside cupboards, around awning fixings, very, very important because the damp is such a big issue. There's one more big issue that we need to check and that's the gas system. 
So let's step outside and have a look at that. So inside the gas locker here, we have the gas bottle and the gas regulator. These are the checks that you can't do yourself because you won't have equipment like this. This is a device called a soundness tester. We connect this to the regulator test point and this allows us to pressure check the gas system entirely and make sure there's no leaks. So once we're connected, we now pump it up to five times operating pressure. Operating pressure being 30 millibar, so we're testing it at 150. We'd leave it at that for five minutes and then we can check again. If it's still at 150, that's good. We've got no leaks. We can then move on to the next test, which is gas flow test. We do that by releasing the pressure. Reconnect, turn on the gas cylinder and light all of the appliances. With everything running, we should have a minimum 25 millibar reading on the gauge. Anything less than that would suggest that the regulator is failing. And finally, we do a flue gas analysis using this device, flue gas analyzer. This gives us a readout of carbon dioxide, carbon non-oxide in parts per million, and overall efficiency of the equipment in question. And that's good. Anything less than 50 parts per million is fine for carbon monoxide. If it was over 50, we'd be looking at doing some remedial work to the boiler to solve it, because carbon monoxide is deadly. Anything over 50 parts per million really does need looking at. This is another good reason why a habitation inspection on a regular basis is a good idea. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time. Yeah.